Welcome to Around the Peninsula. I'm Petty Officer Grant Womack. With this school year coming to a close, saying goodbye for the teachers and students at Osan American Elementary School has a whole different meaning. Tech Sergeant Juacalyn Denny takes us to Osan Air Base to show us why this year is so different than previous years. For the first time since opening its doors in 1979, Osan American Elementary School is not just closing its doors for the summer. Students and teachers say goodbye to the school that has welcomed children through its doors for more than 36 years. It started to develop on its own and, and all of a sudden take a different meaning. And it was like, uh, this is a special thing that we're getting ready to do here. And although we're excited about moving into a new school, it was closing this school that actually has brought about a lot of uh, emotions. And a few of these emotions are anticipation and excitement, knowing the start of a new school year will commence in a new school. We are extremely excited about all the possibilities. It's so much space. We have so many ideas going, and the possibilities for the learning environments for the students are, are immeasurable. Fifth grade student Edward Kim sums it up best. Um, it's a lot bigger, and it's new. Technical Sergeant Jocelyn Denny, Osan Air Base, Korea. The new Osan American Elementary School will open for the 2016 fall school year and is the first 21st century school built in the Pacific. We know that the skies over Korea are often very hazy, but do we really know why? Senior Airman Jordan Thompson takes us aboard NASA's DC-8 to show us what steps they are taking to resolve this issue. Taking off into the hazy Korean sky, a team of scientists from around the world put their skills to the test aboard NASA's DC-8 Airborne Science Laboratory. The goal? Investigate the air quality over the peninsula in support of the Korean U.S. Air Quality Study, or Corus AQ, a mission over five years in the making. On this project is primarily a collaboration between South Korea and the United States, but uh, looking at our manifest, our passenger manifest, our crew manifest, we're looking at about 13 different countries represented with uh, researchers from around the world who are working on this uh, mission. With over 100 sensors on board the aircraft and 27 experiments being conducted, this project isn't just scientifically and technologically impressive. With scientists from across the globe, it showcases that just as the responsibility of the environment falls on more than one nation's shoulders, so does this investigation. It's just really kind of remarkable to think about what it takes to pull off this mission. I mean, it just feels uh, really gratifying to be part of this absolutely world-class team that uh, very few other organizations can pull off. When each of these scientists brings their own expertise to the table, the team is able to create a dynamic picture of the air over the region. When the report is finished, they hope to find a solution to Korea's hazy skies. Reporting from above Korea, I'm Senior Airman Jordan Thompson. The NASA team is looking to have their study wrapped up and be off the peninsula and back home by mid-June. One of the best ways to understand others is to actually try their lifestyle. Army Sergeant Matt Cromer takes us to a special place that can be a turning point for some people. I'm about to do a temple stay here at Kum Sum Sa. I'm going to do 108 bows for prostration, make some meditation beads, and have some green tea while I learn about Buddhism in the Korean culture. 108 is a number from Buddhism signifying that there are 108 defilements in the mind. Each bow takes away one defilement, so after participants prostrate on the wooden floor, their mind and body becomes clean and peaceful. Participants can also enjoy a tranquil atmosphere on the mountain with an instructor's lecture explaining fundamental ideas and concepts of Buddhism. For program participant Dominic Affolter, this is a fulfilling activity away from the daily hustle. Coming from a very vibrant downtown Seoul, it was a very relaxing um, experience which um, gave me the opportunity to take a deep breath, reflect upon myself, my life's choices, very pleasurable experience. Army Sergeant Matt Cromer, Seoul, Korea. Kum Sun Sa has over 600 years of history as a traditional Korean Buddhist temple. 
a press conference about the Terminal High Altitude Area Defense System, or THAAD, was held at the Ministry of Defense. General Thomas Vandal explains more. North Korea's continued pursuit of ballistic missiles and weapons of mass destruction in opposition to its commitments to the international community require our alliance to ensure that we retain the ability to defend ourselves in the face of this threat. Deploying THAAD to the Korean Peninsula will improve our missile defense posture, which is a critical aspect of our defensive strategy. THAAD contributes to a layered missile defense that will enhance the alliance's missile defense capabilities against North Korea. It's not every day that people are recognized for their extra efforts. Army Sergeant Ryan Sharp takes us to one event that does just that. Since 1991, the Korea-America Friendship Society has not only enriched the partnership between the two nations, but the lives of countless U.S. service members. Every year, the society, along with USFK, recognizes the efforts of five individuals who have volunteered much of their time to working with and in the local community. I had a lot of great experiences going out to the warfare. It just was very rewarding as in seeing the little kids' eyes light up. Uh, it was... It was uh, more, more, I mean, it's one of the best things I've ever experienced in a long time, uh, only because, like I said, I have children. My children are a lot older now, but seeing two and three-year-olds all light up because the toys was awesome. So. The efforts and hard work of Staff Sergeant Garcia and those like him strengthen the ROC and U.S. alliance on a human level. Army Sergeant Ryan Sharp, Seoul, Korea. Staff Sergeant Garcia encourages others to take the opportunity and get out on the town and do something special with the community. There's a world full of wonder waiting for you to see it as Specialist Stephen Solomon reports about some magnificent creatures from under the sea. It's time to take a dive at Koje Sea World Korea where the airmen of Kunsan were allowed to swim with the dolphins. It's been a pretty cool experience. The, uh, the divers are very experienced and they're very in-depth with helping you out, making sure that you're safety conscious, but also making sure that you're having a lot of fun too. I've been driving for uh, three or two years. It's not easy but because people did it dive before. It's okay, but they know how to do, how to breathe, how to pop up the ears. But you can do it. Don't worry about that. We always be with you. Even under the water, our, we got an instructor and me, so don't worry about that. You're in good hands. They'll make sure that you have no troubles and that life is the bubbles under the sea in this wonderful sea world. But don't just take it from me. Whereas I can experience these things, it's fantastic. Swimming with dolphin and touching it. This is first time, even for me, this is the first time I do this. I was fun there. And I'll, hopefully the others also have fun there. It was very cool. Very awesome experience to swim with some dolphins, to be able to reach out and touch them and interact with them a little bit. It was a very cool experience and one I highly recommend for anybody who comes here to be able to do this. If they happen to jump on this opportunity, I highly recommend doing it. We all look forward to the next time we can take a dive and swim with our friends with the fins. Our special Stephen Solomon, OJ Sea World, Korea. So if you're on the shore working all day or just want to enjoy the sun and wash the stress away, contact the Outdoor Recreation Center to get info on the next trip to Gurjay Sea World. That was your Around the Peninsula for this week. To see these stories and others, go to the AFM Pacific website or view them through the AFM Pacific app. From all of us at AFN, enjoy your evening. You know what happens with three service members walking to the airport without a leave form? Denied! <laughs> this guy knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, right there. You. Oh, I got, I got another one for you. So why didn't the chick cross the road? Because it forgot his leave pass. <laughs> is he professional? All I know is I'm gonna make sure I have my leave form.